CloudFront is my content delivery network. W3 Total Cache is my plugin for WordPress. Marry the two together and you get better speed. I have another video that goes into more depth and does some benchmarking. This video is really focused on deploying in a streamlined, rapid fashion. You can do this much quicker than push-pull type of CDNs with a simple um, CloudFront pulling from your live website. Minimal setup, API keys, permissions, all that stuff kind of goes out the window. What am I talking about? I'm talking about wonderful articles like this that are super detailed. Um, and then priming the cache and all that. There's a lot of work. This one's even more detailed. And it's very involved. So I'm skipping that technique or that type of article. And I'm going to go ahead and close those to reduce some clutter. We're going to go with this method. To get started, we want to create our CloudFront distribution. All right. Log into your console. It even gives you the URL. And create distribution. So if you go here, right, the little cube, if you're not there already, you've got a CloudFront button right in front of you. See it? Right there. Now that we're in, click Create Distribution. They've changed the word download to web, but that's definitely the right one. Notice the screenshot, everything else is the same about it. Click Continue. Origin name. Pretty simple stuff. In that, all you got to remember is type in the name of your site. Notice there's no Amazon S3 buckets. If your website comes up with www, you want it. If it doesn't, you don't. All right. Alternative C names. I am going to use those. So we scroll through and leave everything else at default. We want to leave this on all over the world. It's going to cost a little more, but I definitely have folks visiting from all over the world. cdn.tinkertry.com is what I'm going to call mine. You could use files or media. But basically, you're picking a name that's kind of a vanity name. You could go with the ugly one that S, uh, Amazon Web Services or AWS CloudFront is going to assign you, or you can go with a little prettier one. And I'll show you it's not hard to set up the prettier one. We scroll down, and like it says over here, just click Create Distribution. This is in progress, right? So we're ready for the next step. And that is to install the plugin. So we're in WordPress WP Admins plugins area for add new. And we search for W3 Total Cache. The very first one is called 0.094. That came out in early April 2014. Click Install Now. Click OK. Before I click Activate, I'm just going to do one quick check of the, of the live website, showing you that, yes, my website's live and working with its rich media. Now we activate the plugin, which is at factory default settings. If you already had it installed, before you uninstall, you should go to the General tab of W3 Total Cache, reset to factory defaults, then uninstall the plugin. Just want to point that out. All right, so we now have the plugin activated but not configured. Does the website still work? We hit Control F5. This is a live website again, and yes, it does. Okay. Now, the point of the plugin is so that when you open up graphics, images like this, say, copy, shortcut, go to a new tab, paste that shortcut, control V. You'll see it brings up just the image and has www in front of it. Well, where we want that to come from is from Amazon instead, faster than our web hosting provider and pushed out to the edges of the network all over the world. That's the whole point here. So let's continue onward with configuration. You'll notice performance showed up here and here at the top. Those are our new areas. We're going to go to general settings. If you have a pop-up, you want to click Cancel from the dashboard view to get rid of it once and for all. The next URL to go through is this one. It talks about installing W3 Total Cache, which we just did. And now we want to configure it with the general settings. 
It's telling us not to use the toggle all option. And we go right to page cache. We definitely want page caching. So we want to change this from basic to either enhanced, if you're on a shared web hosting account, which is typical, or in my case, I have a virtual server, VPS account on DaddyServe. So I'm going to use this ungrade alternative PHP cache. Okay, let's scroll down. We don't have to click Save All Settings yet until we're done with this page. Unify, enable, and again, use the same option we picked before. Everything else looks good. Keep cruising on down. Database cache. All right, where is database cache? Uh, they say object cache and database use the same thing. There's some cheap hosts that have SSDs, but they're quite slow if you do a DD copy and test them. So in my case, I have a very fast SSD. I am not going to turn these on. I don't want these objects showing up. Uh, kind of littering my file system, frankly, and taking up bloating by a third my 5 gig install on my website, turning into a much bigger footprint on disk. So I am ignoring those two. I have not found that's hurt me on my benchmark scores at all. Your results may vary. All right. Browser cache we want on. Did I miss that over on the left? No, it's right there. And page cache settings. Uh huh. So I'm not ready for this yet. I've got to get the CDN set up. So remember back to this article, it talks about setting up the CDN. What about configuring W3 Total Cache? So we want to go to General Settings in the CDN section. So we can click Enable and then take a breath and just leave it on this screen so you can read. I have had issues with Amazon Cloud Front Menu dropdown. It's the more difficult way to install, as I mentioned at the front. It's a bit confusing to people, too, because you have actually three different options. Amazon CloudFront, Pull, CloudFront Push, and S3. Again, those techniques are much more complicated to set up. Watch how easy this is. If you pick generic, like he suggests on the left here, and now find that we can click Save All Settings. All the settings we just did should be there. Minify, database cache off, OK. Now, this first one worries me. Feels like I somehow missed that. So back to here. Somehow I missed page cache. Turning it on. Looks like I ch picked opcode, but I forgot to ch toggle that box. So now you're likely to make a similar mistake. So you want to go real slowly and carefully. We're ready to go to page cache setting, the next page down. Okay, line up the two windows. And we're going to go with trusting this author. You may feel differently. All right, now our screens match. Okay, preloading the cache is the next section, right below it. When your source, when your website is going to be changed, so all the URLs point to your CDN instead of your normal URL for all your media, all we need to do is configure this plugin properly, and it's going to magically prime the cache as soon as the pr first person hits your home page or some other article that you've written. Now, if you want, you can have it prime the cache for all you know, 400 something of my articles. So it's not a bad idea, but it's not necessary. So if you have a sitemap like that, put that in the clipboard, paste it right in there, and go by what this author says. 
and prime the cache for new stuff. So that means even an article that you just published will come from CDN rather than waiting for the first user to visit it and then come from CDN. So that first user will get a slow experience. And this explains it. They're recommending Google XML sitemaps. Okay, browser cache settings. Things have changed in this section uh, with a whole bunch of extra stuff that that author didn't talk about. And now we get down to here under advanced. Didn't talk about that either because we are um, just finishing a page the author has not talked about. So if we scroll up here, you'll see nothing about the advanced section. So the author just stopped up here and headed to browser cache section, which is down here. So skipping all these other ones, which is interesting. Not sure what happened with Minify, right? Okay, we're gonna go to browser cache next. And general, bring that up. Set expires, cache control, entity tag. Okay, a lot of checkboxes. And that looks the same. Okay, it's saying you're done. So we click Save All Settings to move back to the original article, which shows you what to do. Do you remember where we are? Generic mirror. And then we have to go to the CDN submenu is where we want to head next. How do we know what this is supposed to look like? Well, we go to Amazon CloudFront and whether this is done or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, ours already finished, but even when it's pending, you may remember earlier in this video, this domain name show the whole while. So you don't have to wait. Copy, right click, copy. So instead of pasting in an ugly name like that, we're going to use cPanel's simple DNS zone editor. And we're going to add a CNAME record. We'll call it cdn.tinkertry.com. And we'll then paste in here that URL that's in our clipboard and say add CNAME record. Now in my case, I'm not actually live with using this DNS. I use a third-party DNS provider. But this is how it looks for most folks in cPanel. Their control over DNS is done right from there, and you set up a name like that. Now, I use DNS Made Easy, where the wizard looks different for CNames. In plus, typing in CDN, tab, control V, dot. Perfect. The dot at the end got rid of .tinkertry.com. You don't want that. So cdn.tinkertry.com will point to this record. That's perfect. Click Submit, and not so fast. I like to see things work. Let me explain. We can do a couple things to see this work. We can do an NS lookup to make sure we don't accidentally already have a record there. We don't. That's the IP address of my web host, so that's normal. That's the default. And then we can run this global DNS, what's my DNS.net propagator checker cdn.tinkertry.com, change from the default of A to C name, click search and you should get a bunch of red X's. All right, and here comes uh, the fun part. Well, I find it fun. Um, it's ready, we're ready to do it. So we click submit and DNS made easy, propagates all over the world very quickly. You saw a little green success there and CDN is now added there. Let's try again here by clicking search on this window Nothing yet. Well, one. And let's do an NS look up here. I'm leaving the clock running. So let's see how long it takes me. <laughs> okay. Should have run the clock before I started, but yeah, it's basically instant with DNS made easy. And um, click here, we're going to have a lot more green, I would think. Well, not all over the world yet. So it's a few minutes later. Ta-da, we're good. So if we went live 
here with the CDN configured in W3 Total Cache, we would break our website for a number of people all over the world that didn't see this DNS propagation happen yet, right? All right, so remember this site just kind of went with the quick and easy replace the host name, but we're going to do the CNAME approach. Remember, the whole point of what we just did was to type in the simple thing. Obviously, you're going to type in the name of your website instead of what I did. So we can now do test mirror. It passed. And save all settings. That's the moment we just went live with Content Delivery Network on our site. Let's hit Control F5. Force network refresh of the site. And there we go. We saw a little spinning pinwheel there. Now the cache is primed. It's hitting the CDN. It's actually on Amazon S3 because we've hit it once, which triggers it to, hey, someone wants this. Cache is primed. Now if we right-click, copy shortcut. This is Internet Explorer 11. There it is. That's what's in my clipboard, cdn.tankertry.com. So it has changed my URLs. That's how CDN works. So now this is coming from a server near me. So my server where my Tinkertry website lives is New York City. If you're far from it, you want that media file to come from a server much closer to your neck of the woods. You don't want to use these buttons, I'll point out. You might want to go to General Settings and scroll all the way down and download the config. So now we have a backup. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.